Everybody and welcome to the sixth episode of Behind the Scenario. Today I'm going to talk about one of the great TV presenters and TV hosts in the history of America, Larry King, who recently passed away at the age of 80, 70 years old. He was the host of a great TV show during many years, Larry King Live and this was his legacy which left us many interviews with artists all over the country and people who are today considered very influential and very important let us see which is his legacy For today's episode, I made a personal selection of the most important interviews that Larry King has co hosted over the years. We are going to start watching some interviews from 1990s and then proceed to the next level to interviews from 1980s or even backwards. So we are going to have a full, interesting, wide range of analysis and watching his materials, uh, the fact that he had so much um, popularity among the spectators of the television. So he was actually working from CNN and this was very important because he has his great visibility. But the most important thing, I am uh, very, very uh, attached to the idea that he knew how to do it. He always knew what question to ask the people and the person in front of him. And this, I think, is the most interesting thing that we have to watch when we are watching his interviews. So let us watch 1990s selection of interviews with many important people from actors, to presidents, to sports, and musicians. Oh yeah, very much so. You are very happy with it. I'm, I'm very proud of the movie, yeah. Yes, I am. The reaction to it, uh, Mickey, has been extraordinary. It is doing excellent business, but the, pro, the Asian American protests and people being upset by it, even some of the critics who say you'll enjoy it, but it'll upset you. Uh, how do you react to that? Well, it kind of, uh, I'm getting used to it. Okay, to answer your question, Larry, um, when I saw the movie for the first time after Michael had cut it, and uh, I came out of the theater, I saw it, and uh, I was really glad that I had the opportunity to, to work on, a, on this particular kind of material with the guidance of someone like Michael Cimino because what, what he brought to it was a sense of truth as far as uh, I mean the casting the, the fact that he he went out and found someone like John Lone to portray Joey Ty and uh, to to work with those kind of actors along with Michael's direction it was uh, well, Michael did about, I think he did like a year's worth of research. Tonight, Madonna, live for the full hour and your phone calls next on Larry King Live. Special treat tonight, an hour with Madonna. If we have to tell you who she is, you have severe problems. <laughs> How did you, how did you get that name? Why are you a one-name person? Um, well, I was born with that name. I was named after my mother. And I guess when I started making records, Madonna Ciccone seemed too long and complicated. 
and uh, I just got stuck with Madonna. You had such a long relationship with, with Michael Jackson <laughs> uh, back when he was a young recording star. There were rumors that he, he changed his looks to look like you. How would you describe Michael Jackson hyphen Diana Ross? What is that? Uh, well, you see, um, we actually uh, love each other. It's, it's, uh, it, he's like one of my children. When he started his career, I introduced them on their very first television show, which was the Ed Sullivan Show. And then I had... The secret of a long-lasting marriage. And in your business yet. Um, well, I'm uncomfortable talking about that. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. but, 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 um, it just is. It, most people it are now turns in marriage. Out, it turns out that it is probably some... Um, combination of lust and and respect and patience. Dustin Hoffman, who's here just because he's a good guy. It's not. He's not. This is not a promotional tour. He doesn't need it. He's going to be doing a movie though about CNN. We'll talk about that. But back to Midnight Cowboy. When it was finished, did you know? Hey, this is special. No, not at all. The, the, op the opposite. Opposite. They were previewing that movie, and people. I was at the preview. People walked out in droves. We're back on this special edition of Larry King Live during our 10th anniversary week. We thank Barbara Streisand very much for being with us. Why? What do you make of this? Well, this I, anger at everything? I think... I think people are against the idea of government because this, this rhetoric gets to you, you know? It, it sparks anger. Anger sparks... Anger, you know, hate is a great energizer. It's big and it's bad. It's it's not good. Um. We're ready to go to your calls for Lady Margaret Thatcher, and we start with Washington D.C. Hello. Hi, Lady Thatcher. I know you're a great admirer of Ronald Reagan, and I wanted to ask you who among the men now running for the Republican presidential nomination, Dole and Buchanan and the rest of them, do you think would be the most faithful to Ronald Reagan's ideas and his legacy and conservatism? Oh, I think you're asking me to interfere in American politics, and that would be a very dangerous thing for me to do. Well, I thank you for coming back. Well, Larry, it's a pleasure to be here. Well, let's get right to first things first before we reflect on that American life. Your thoughts on what's gone on today, yesterday, since August. How do you view all this? Well, I think that it is a, it's really a situation that should capture everyone's interest. And I think that uh, a lot of things are being overemphasized, and maybe some of them underemphasized in this. First of all, the constant repetition of the United States versus Iraq and Saddam Hussein is overlooking the fact that it is the United Nations that is in this. Come off this. <laughs> we'll be back with some Thank more you. moments with Marlon Brando. By the way, there's nothing in this house, in this wonderful house, that says you're an actor. Okay, there's no, there's no uh, theater billboards, there's no movie cutouts, there's no Oscar. Where's your Oscar? I don't know. You don't know where your Oscar? I think my secretary has it. Larry King was born in 1933 in Brooklyn and he was first a radio broadcaster in Miami. After that, starting from 1978, he came to CNN and started being the host of his own show. I started reading his autobiography. One of the questions that he is trying to ask in his book is that, what makes a perfect guest? And Larry King answers. The quality of a guest has nothing to do with his profession. A plumber can be a great guest and a statesman can be a bad one. You want someone who can explain what or she does very well, has a passion for it, a sense of humor about it, and a little chip on his shoulder. That's why Sinatra was so great. If a person has those four things, viewers will stay tuned. And of course, uh, Sinatra and the interview with Sinatra, which we are going to watch next, 
was very, very important in his career. He also answered to the question which guest uh, find it the most extraordinary and he answered Nelson Mandela. So Larry King has many interested, interesting views over his um, guests and he was also uh, a person with a great sense of humor. A long time ago, 26 years ago, Richard Condon wrote a novel called The Manchurian Candidate. It was a hit book, turned into a terrific film. Richard Condon guested on my radio show a couple years ago, and I asked him, where is that film? And Richard Condon said, Frank Sinatra controls that film. I hope he lets it out, but he has not let it out. And now it is out. It's become one of the major cult films in America. In July, it'll be released on home video. We're going to show you a segment from it. You're going to see a young vital, terrific Sinatra with the late Lawrence Harvey in a scene from an incredible movie, and then we will find out for the first time on the air why the Manchurian Candidate is back among us. But here is a scene from the Manchurian Candidate. I've been in the Army 19 years. First time I've ever seen one of these. I've been having this nightmare. A real swinger of a nightmare, too. It has to do with uh, well, all kinds of strange people. Is it about a Russian general and some Chinese and me and the men who were on the patrol? How did you know that? How do you know? Take your hands off me. Please, Raymond. Tell me, how did you know? Well, I don't really know anything about it at all. But you just started to tell me that. You remember Al Melvin, the corporal on the patrol? Yes, of course. Well, I had a letter from him a couple of weeks ago. Needless to say, I was very surprised to hear from him. You know how much the guys in the outfit hated me. Well, not as much as I hated them, of course. Well, anyway, the funny thing was, he said in his letter that I was the best friend he had in the army. I was the best friend he had in the army. Wow. Why did, why did you hold on to that film? Uh, I don't know. I really don't know. Um, I didn't even know that we had the right to do that. Until it <laughs> happened. I swear to God, I didn't know. You didn't know you owned the rights? Uh, we did. I didn't know that we owned the rights out, you know, outright, that nobody else could touch the picture. So then and he said, well, what are you going to do? I said, I don't know what you do about it. You guys, are, it's your business. To, whether you want to release it in theaters, you want to put it on television, whatever. But I had, I didn't know who, whomever it was who was working for me made a pretty good deal, apparently. And I never knew about that, that we really owned the film. And so in other words, when you made that film, you had no idea. So when Richard Condon told me on the radio three, four years ago that you owned the film, you didn't know you owned it. I didn't know. I didn't know. Uh, I didn't deal much with my business people. I, I rarely spent time with them, you know. I, they they bore me out for spending too much money every time we saw Did you ever wonder, why is Manchurian Candidate never on television? Yeah, I wondered about it. But I never looked into it. I never, I never went and asked questions about it. That's all for this episode. Thank you and join me again next time, only here on Behind the Scenario.